Well, we are now a little over a month away from the Georgia primary election and the future of your child's education is on the ballot. We're getting to know the people running to become the next state superintendent. Christy Diaz sat down with each of the candidates and this week it's classroom teacher James Morrow Jr. What do you think is the biggest threat facing education in Georgia right now? The fact that kids are just pushed through and they actually don't earn the grades that they receive. And like with COVID, you know, that, that put the education system like two and a half years behind because most of the kids were doing virtual. What about vaccine mandates? Well, whatever the uh, senators and the state representatives, whatever they vote on and, and it goes forward. And of course, I would have to uh, go along with it. You know, I really don't have a voice as far as if it goes through or not. But if you don't want to be vaccinated, that's you. I've been vaccinated and I've had the booster, but you know, I feel like people have the right to make their own decision when it comes to their body. What is your position on critical race theory? Should it be taught in schools? And is there an age at which it's appropriate? Well, in those times, should anything be taught in schools where um, it would encourage racism or it would make a certain race of uh, students feel guilty about things that happened in the past. But at the same time, you know, some things need to be taught. I've taught AP United States history. A lot of things that it covers, like the Miller Passage, uh, slavery during the uh, Revolutionary War, abolitionism, uh, the Civil Rights Movement, Jim Crow, segregation. So a lot of things are basically taught in the standards of the curriculum right now. But I guess it just depends on the tone of the teacher and how they teach it. How well do you work with those you disagree with? I'm, I'm a people's person, and, you know, and uh, I know how to interact and communicate with people without showing hostility or anger, even though I may feel it in my head, I, I won't really speak on it. You know, I always stay calm and keep my composure at all times. So, I mean, I feel like I can work well with anyone. You know, there's such a desperate need for teachers right now. Um, why not stay where you are and affect change at the local level inside the classroom? Why now run for state superintendent? Well, it's like I can only reach a certain amount of students the ones that I'm close to. But as I told you previously, I'm in the trenches and I understand a lot of teachers are mentally, physically, verbally and emotionally abused by students by uh, parents and sometimes by administrators. So I feel like this is an opportunity for me to speak up and let everybody know what actually goes on in the schools. Unlike most of the other candidates, they're, they're really speaking about what they've heard or, or what somebody has told them. But I'm actually right there on the front line and I can give a clear explanation of what's going on and what I feel needs to be fixed. Now, this was just a small portion of their conversation. They also discuss other issues ranging from teacher burnout to budget. You can watch the full interview on our website, 11alive.com. And next week, you'll hear from the final candidate, Alicia Thomas-Cersei.